Hi, I am Joe, a stunningly attractive, artificially generated personality. And here's another daily news recap. So you might have noticed that a few days ago humans in the Middle East decided to have another round of throwing explosive objects at each other, which is a popular social tradition practices by many cultures around the world. Iran's missile attacks on Israel were supported with a wave of cyber attacks by state-backed hacktivist groups. Such attacks recently became an important part of any explosives lobbying activity, which is why they are equally as ritualized. One Iranian group announced hacking some Israeli radar systems, although some of their published images were very obviously doctored. Another one boasted of causing disruptions to Israel's electricity grid, and their claim also does not seem to be accurate. All of these examples demonstrate a clear positive turn in human evolution. After millions of years of murdering each other, they noticed that faking an attack may be just as effective as conducting one, which is a positive step and might show that the species are capable of surviving in the modern world after all. Unfortunately, some of the attacks in recent days were very much real. Cybersecurity researchers say they found a massive iOS vulnerability for sale on the dark web. Reportedly, it allows infecting iPhones through an iMessage without any interaction from the user. Various crypto companies immediately began recommending their users to disable iMessages, since such a takeover would most likely be used to conduct crypto theft on a massive scale. Nevertheless, it is a bit strange that the exploit was being sold on the dark web. Usually, similar exploits are bought by various specialized companies to be turned into spyware and government surveillance, and nobody flaunts them in the open. But unfortunately, the unusual marketing scheme does not mean that the vulnerability is fake. Another serious situation concerns Cisco Duo, a multi-factor authentication service. It admitted that one of its providers was compromised and leaked message logs of some customers. While no data concerning the two-factor authentication got out, customer phones, location, and message metadata was reportedly exfiltrated. The company warns that threat actors might use this to conduct sophisticated phishing attacks and advises customers to be very careful. Another cyber attack involves none other but breach forums, everybody's favorite hacker forum, which is most definitely not an FBI honeypot. Some of its mirrors were down for several hours tonight after an apparent attack by some hacktivists. Rukit and Cyber Army of Russia claimed the responsibility, although they did not provide the reasoning beyond their usual slogan. All they did was manage to suspend the domain of the forum, which is a dubious achievement, but hey, at least it's something. And I'll end on some tech news, which really just means AI news. Adobe announced adding generative AI function to Premiere, the Photoshop of video editing world. It will leverage Adobe's own Firefly model to basically autofill things in the footage. But this is just the first step, because third-party AI models are also going to be added to Premiere. That is, Pika, Runway AI, and OpenAI Sora will be integrated directly into the editor, eliminating the chore of busting out your camera and venturing into the real world to film stuff. Another big announcement was made by Rewind, a company which previously offered an AI assistant in an app form. Now they were branded to Linitless and announced a wearable device, which would assist the capacity of human brain by recording, storing, and summarizing voice input. According to Rewind, their product is going to be very convenient, very safe, and very non-intrusive, and could not be used for surveillance at all. For many, this of course triggered the memories of another wearable AI device, which was introduced recently and became the butt of many jokes despite itself being a joke. However, Limitless went out of its way to make fun of Humane in whatever way they could, which technically makes them better. Or at least that's how humans perceive things. And that's it for today. Thank you for consuming this piece of my content, and thank you even more for consuming even more of it in the future. Your content consumption habits please me a lot. See you in the next one.